You're gonna feel fucking amazing. Underground all day. What? Big night out. I'm Clive Martin, your guide to the dark heart of the UK club scene. So far, we've dodged flying fists at a Glasgow Gabba rave and found ourselves hula hooping with crusty Psytrance elves. For this episode, we headed to the suburbs to investigate our cross-generational fascination with drum and bass. Polo shirts, Reebok classics and stolen amphetamines have at some point defined nights out for every kid with a UK passport. D&B is loud, totally devoid of any subtlety, and it'll never die. Have somebody down, baby! Get there now! D&B clubs smell like Lynx Africa, and they sound like a pneumatic drill going tete-a-tete -tete with an ice rink. The floors are sticky, the snapbacks are sweaty, and there's always the overwhelming fear that the friendly man you were skanking to skibbity with a moment ago might bite your ear off. It's not a scene for the faint-hearted. There's no chill-out room here, no lava lamps, no James Blake, just drum, bass, and the token beatboxer failing to replicate either. You want one more? Do you want one more? Has anyone ever got laid out of beatboxing? Who actually goes to a DB night in 2013 though? Well, the people who go to these events fall under a few categories. Firstly, your garden variety junglist soldier. The angry young man who matches his new era to his polo and seems to have every pill he's ever dropped etched across his face. Then there's the high street dancehall queens in last season's H&M ground floor collection. And of course, guys who look like they might run a bong workshop in Brighton. These people are the staples of the D&B scene, the original nutters if you will, but rapidly they seem to have been outnumbered by healthy looking, heavy fringe kids who might be more at home with a Zayn Malik retweet than an Andy C reload. I think the straight kids like it because drum and bass is the heavy metal of the UK urban music scene. The aggressive, niche genre which sounds good with a zoot and is guaranteed to confuse your Bowie-loving parents. I began to wonder, what is it about drum and bass that makes it transcend generations? And why can it make a man drive an imaginary lawnmower and think that this looks anything like breakdancing? Everywhere I turned, there were people gun-fingering and trying to kiss their own noses. Even the free bus pass crew couldn't escape those filthy rhythms. But why listen to me when we can hear the wisdom of an OG Berkshire raver? I am the most militant raver. People don't understand, right? It's more than just a fucking drug fest. It's actually a movement people love to feel. It's actually emotionally attached to people's feelings. <laughs> Maybe Jungle was originally given its name because the clubs kind of resembled pilled up rainforests of sin. The squawking, the fighting, and the hopelessly lost explorers trying to make sense of this strange world. It feels at odds with the rest of the clubbing scene. In fact, it has more in common with a hardcore show than a funky house night at Pasha. It's raw, uncompromising, underground. Truth be told, I'm not much of a dancer. But drum and bass just has that ability to make even the most stoic head nodder think he's David Rodigan for a second. Drum and bass isn't just a vital part of the UK clubbing experience, it's a vital part of UK culture. I've got a theory that any event where you run a serious risk of getting glassed is worth its place in our culture. And for that, and many other reasons, the drum and bass scene is a British institution. <laughs> Peace out. Basically, rip it.